If you've used Hibernate for a while, I'm sure you know the n plus one select issue. It's the most common performance problem and describes how Hibernate executes dozens or even hundreds of queries to fetch related entities. In this video, I will show you how you can easily fix those issues using an entity graph. An entity graph tells Hibernate which relationships it shall fetch from the database. Hibernate will then fetch your entity together with the defined set of relationships in just one query. Let's get into the IDE and give it a try. The interesting thing about an entity graph is that it's query independent. You define it using a set of annotations like these ones here. And when you execute a query, you can combine it with your entity graph. That enables you to use your entity graph when calling the entity manager's find method. It also makes it easy to reuse the same query in different use cases with an entity graph that fits the needs of each use case. You define a named entity graph by annotating an entity class with a named entity graph annotation. For each graph, you have to provide a unique name and a list of attributes you want to fetch. When fetching an entity, Hibernate always fetches all basic attributes. So you only have to reference the relationships you want to fetch here. This graph here only includes one named attribute node annotation and helps Hibernate to fetch the books attribute. When I combine this with my author entity, which has a books attribute that models a many to many relationship to the book entity, Hibernate includes that relationship in the query. I show you that in a second. But before I do that, I want to quickly point out something that's easy to miss, but important to know. As you can see here, the named entity graph and the named attribute node don't reference any entity class. And this graph is also not bound to the entity class on which I defined it. You can use it on any query that returns an entity class with an attribute called books but I recommend you define a graph with a specific entity class in mind. I usually include the name of that entity class and the names of the fetch relationships in the graph's name. That makes the code using this graph much easier to read. Okay, let's keep this graph simple for now and combine it with the query. After that, I'll show you how to define a graph that fetches multiple layers of relationships. This test case executes a simple query that fetches all author entities. After I define the query, I get my named entity graph from the entity manager and add it as a fetch graph to the query. This tells Hibernate to include all attributes referenced in the graph's definition and all basic attributes in this query. All other non-basic attributes, which are typically all relationships, are fetched lazily. You can also use the graph as a load graph. Hibernate then uses the defined fetch type for all non-basic attributes that are not part of the graph. If you're not sure what a fetch type is and how to define it, please watch the first video in this series. Okay, so what happens when I combine this query with the named entity graph we just defined? Let's check the log output. Here you can see the executed SQL query. It joins the author with the book table and selects all columns mapped by the author and the book entity. Because of this, Hibernate can initialize the list of books on each of the selected author entities. This avoids the lazy initialization exception and the n plus one select issue when accessing the books relationship. And as I said earlier, the entity graph is not limited to JPQL queries. You can use it on a criteria query in the same way. And if you want to provide the entity graph to your call of the entity manager's find method, you have to put it into a map and provide that map as the third method parameter. Okay, I promised you a more complex graph that fetches an additional level of relationships. Let's do that next. This graph adds a named subgraph to the graph definition I showed you earlier. It defines the intended fetching behavior for the reviews relationship, and I tell Hibernate to apply it to the books fetched via the named attribute node. This tells Hibernate to fetch the books relationship and apply the review subgraph to each of the books. And that subgraph tells Hibernate to fetch the reviews relationship. So if I combine this graph with a query that fetches all author entities, Hibernate will fetch all authors with their books and the reviews of each book. 
Here you can see the executed SQL query. As expected, it joins the author table with the book table and that one with the review table. It selects all columns mapped by the three entity classes. That already shows a potential problem of an entity graph. And to be honest, I see this one quite often when working with my consulting clients. The result set of this query might get huge. The database returns it as a flat data structure with a record for each combination of author, book, and review. So for an author who wrote five books and each book has 100 reviews, the result set contains 500 records. And if you now select multiple authors or include more relationships in your graph definition, the size of the result set might cause performance issues on the database or when mapping it to entity objects. So better keep your graphs simple and be careful when including multiple relationships. If you want to include multiple to many relationships in your graph definition, you also have to make sure to map them as a set. Otherwise, Hibernate will throw a multiple back fetch exception. A bag is a Hibernate-specific unordered collection type that allows duplicates and fetching multiple of them can cause problems when Hibernate maps the result to graphs of related entities. And that's why Hibernate doesn't allow it. The best way to avoid this is to model all too many relationships that can contain duplicates as a set. As you saw, entity graphs enable you to define which relationships Hibernate shall initialize when fetching an entity, but it's not the only thing you should do to efficiently fetch required relationships. In the next video, I will show you several pitfalls you should avoid, including a situation in which entity graphs and joint fetch clauses create their own performance problems.